Hi, it's Ms. Vitao. This section is on macromolecules. It corresponds to Chapter 5 in the textbook for AP Biology. Many of the organic molecules in nature are gigantic. Macromolecules are giant molecules in a living organism. For example, proteins, polysaccharides, nucleic acids are all macromolecules. They may contain thousands of covalently bonded atoms. Cells make a lot of macromolecules by joining together smaller molecules into chains called polymers. A large molecule consisting of many similar molecular units strung together is what makes up a polymer. Monomers are the units that serve as the building blocks of polymers. The monomers are like the cars of a train and the polymer is the whole train. Living cells make vast numbers of different polymers. There are over a trillion different proteins in nature. Even though the number of polymers made by cells is endless, only about 40 to 50 common monomers are used and a few other rare ones. For example, proteins are made of only 20 different amino acids. DNA is made of only four nucleotides. Cells link monomers together in a process called dehydration synthesis. All monomers have hydrogen atoms and hydroxyl groups on either side. For each monomer added to a chain, a water molecule is removed. Sometimes macromolecules need to be broken down. For example, when you digest your food. In that case, hydrolysis comes in. Hydrolysis is the opposite of dehydration synthesis. In hydrolysis, the bonds in a polymer are broken by the addition of water. Carbohydrates are small sugars and large polymers made of sugars, like starch, glycogen, and cellulose. Monosaccharides are single sugars. For example, glucose and fructose are monosaccharides. They usually have molecular formulas that are multiples of one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. For example, C6H12O6 is glucose. There are two trademarks of a sugar. One, the hydroxyl group, which is an OH, and the other, the carbonyl group. Hydroxyl groups make it an alcohol, and the carbonyl group makes it either an aldehyde like glucose or a ketone like fructose. Fructose is also C6H12O6 like glucose, but the carbonyl group is in a different place than glucose. Therefore, fructose and glucose are isomers. The difference between them actually makes fructose sweeter. Monosaccharides have between three and seven carbons. Pentoses have five carbons and hexoses have six carbons. They are the most common. OSE is the suffix of most sugars. In water or an aqueous solution, most monosaccharides form rings, but many switch back and forth between linear and ring forms of the molecules. Monosaccharides, especially glucose, are the main fuel for cells. The part of monosaccharides are also used to build other organic molecules like amino acids. Disaccharides are a double sugar. Cells combine two sugars using dehydration synthesis. For example, two glucoses make maltose. Maltose is the malt sugar that's found in beer and malted milkshakes. It's also found in germinating seeds. Glycosidic linkage is the covalent bond between the two sugars of a disaccharide. So glucose plus fructose makes sucrose, which is table sugar, and the main ingredient in tree sap. Glucose plus galactose makes lactose, which is the sugar in milk. Your tongue has taste buds for sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. The substances besides sugar that you eat can trigger your sweet taste buds. We perceive sweetness when molecules attach to a sweet receptor on our brain, triggering a message to our brain. Aspartame, like equal and neutral sweet, is made of two amino acids, but also binds to a sweet receptor. Aspartame is 150 times as sweet as sucrose. Saccharin is 450 times sweeter. The tighter a molecule fits the sweet receptor, the sweeter it tastes. Some artificial sweeteners also bind to other taste receptors, therefore leaving a bitter aftertaste. Polysaccharides are hundreds or thousands of monosaccharides joined together by glycosidic links. Many act as storage molecules of sugar that can break down for energy. 
One type of polysaccharide is starch. It is made of all glucoses. It's found in plant roots and vegetables like potatoes and grains. It curls into a helix. Plant cells may contain starch granules for storage of sugar for energy and break into glucose when needed. Humans and animals hydrolyze starch when they eat it. It is a major source of the major source of starch around the world is wheat, corn, rice, and potatoes. Glycogen is another type of polysaccharide. Excess sugar in animals is stored as glycogen, mostly in the liver and muscles. It is identical to starch, but more branched. Glycogen is hydrolyzed to release glucose. Our digestive system can hydrolyze glycogen in the meat we eat also. Another type of polysaccharide is cellulose. It is the most abundant organic compound on the planet. Cellulose is a glucose polymer, but they're linked together differently. They form an unbranched rod rather than a coil. Cellulose molecules are connected by hydrogen bonds to form fiber. Cellulose gives plants support. It's what forms their cell walls. We can't hydrolyze most cellulose. However, it is the fiber in our diet and is still important in our digestive system to keep things flowing. Cows and termites and other animals that eat just plants have special microorganisms in their gut or their gastrointestinal tract that breaks down cellulose. Chitin contains nitrogen. It is a polysaccharide that makes up the exoskeletons of arthropods like insects, spiders, and crustaceans and the cell walls of fungi. Another group of macromolecules or organic molecules are lipids. Lipids are compounds that consist mainly of carbon and hydrogen. They are linked together by nonpolar covalent bonds. They are not attracted to water molecules because they are nonpolar, therefore hydrophobic. Lipids are fats, oils, waxes, phospholipids, and some pigments. We'll talk about fat first. Fat is a large lipid made of glycerol and fatty acids. Glycerol is an alcohol with three carbons each and a hydroxyl group. Fatty acids are a carboxyl group and a hydrocarbon chain about 15 carbons long. It's linked to hydrogen atoms by nonpolar covalent bonds, therefore it's hydrophobic. Fat is the main storage for energy in organisms, and one gram of fat stores more than twice as much energy as one gram of starch. One fat molecule, as you can see, is three fatty acids and one glycerol, so it's also called a triglyceride, which is what you see on food labels or what is tested for in blood tests. An unsaturated fat contains double bonds, preventing the carbon skeleton from having the maximum number of hydrogens. The double bond forms a kink. Therefore, the molecules can't pack tightly together and they form liquids at room temperature. Unsaturated fats are oils, found from plants. Saturated fats have no double bonds in the fatty acid. Therefore, the chains can pack together tightly and form solids at room temperature. Animal fats are saturated fats like lard and butter. Saturated fats contribute to heart disease. Plaque containing fat in blood vessels build up on the inside walls and causes a condition called atherosclerosis. Hydrogenated vegetable oil on labels is unsaturated fat converted to saturated fat by adding hydrogens. This is what margarine is. Phospholipids are the major component of cell membranes. They're similar to fat but contain phosphorus and have two fatty acids, not three. We will discuss them further when we look at cells. Waxes have one fatty acid and an alcohol. They're more hydrophobic than fats. We find them on the natural coating on fruits, Insects have to keep them, insects have waxy coatings to keep them from drying out. Steroids are another type of lipid. Um, the carbon skeleton is bent to form four fused rings. All steroids have three six-sided rings and one five-sided ring. Um, cholesterol is an example of a steroid. It's found in animal cell membranes and animal cells use it to make other steroids like estrogen and testosterone which are sex hormones that are steroid-based. Too much cholesterol in the fat also contributes to heart disease. Anabolic steroids are a synthetic variant of testosterone. Testosterone builds up in muscles and bone during puberty in boys and maintains masculine traits throughout life. 
Anabolic steroids mimic the shape of testosterone and mimic its effects. As prescriptions, anabolic steroids are used for anemia and diseases that cause muscle deterioration. Athletes use them to build muscle and enhance performance. Overdosing can cause violent mood swings, deep depressions, liver damage, and can lead to cancer. It can also alter cholesterol levels and lead to high blood pressure. You can lower natural male hormones by using anabolic steroids, which will cause shrunken testicles, reduce sex drive, infertility, and breast enlargement. In teens, it can actually cause bones to stop growing. In 1998, Mark McGuire broke the home run record but was accused of andro, which is a um, compound related to anabolic steroids. You can buy it over the counter in health food stores. Andro is normally produced by the body and converted to testosterone. Studies show it does not increase testosterone levels or muscle mass, but it does raise estrogen levels, which can cause large breasts in males and increase cancer risk. Andro is not banned by the Major League Baseball, but it is banned by the NCAA, the Olympic Committee, and the NFL. Mark McGuire has also stopped using it. The next group of macromolecules are proteins. Protein is Greek for first place because proteins were discovered and researched early and their importance and variety has been known for a long time. A protein is a biological polymer constructed of amino acid monomers. You have tens of thousands of different proteins in your body. Proteins are important building blocks of cells and are important in the function of cells. There are seven major classes of proteins. The first one is structural proteins. They make up things like spider, silk, hair, fibers of tendons, and ligaments. Structural proteins are for support. Contractile proteins, which work with tendons and ligaments, are for movement. They provide muscular movement and the movement of cilia and flagella. Storage proteins store amino acids. Ovalbumin is egg white, is found in egg whites. It stores amino acids for embryos. Casein is a milk protein that stores amino acids for baby mammals. The fourth group is defensive proteins. They protect against disease, and the main example are antibodies. Transport proteins transport other substances. For example, hemoglobin carries oxygen in the blood. Signal proteins coordinate activities in organisms. Hormones are the major type of signal proteins. Enzymes are an important group of proteins. They are catalysts. They change the rate of a chemical reaction without being changed themselves. Enzymes promote and regulate most chemical reactions in cells. The diversity of proteins are based on a set of 20 amino acids. Amino acids have an amino group and a carboxyl group. The amino and carboxyl group are covalently bonded to a central carbon called the alpha carbon. The R group is the variable part of the amino acid. It determines physical and chemical properties of the amino acid. In glycine, the R group is just a hydrogen. This is the simplest amino acid. In other amino acids, the R group can be one or more carbons with functional groups attached. Amino acids are linked together by dehydration synthesis. As you can see, a hydroxide group and a hydrogen group on adjacent amino acids are removed to form water, and a pe peptide bond forms between them. Peptide bonds are the covalent links between two amino acids. A polypeptide is a chain of amino acids. Amino acids are released from polypeptides by hydrolysis. A molecule of water is added back to break the peptide bond and separate the amino acids. The specific shape of each protein determines its function. Nearly all proteins must, must recognize and bind to some other molecule in order to function. Lysozyme is an enzyme found in tears and white blood cells. It destroys bacteria by binding to specific molecules on the bacteria's cell surface. Proteins can be denatured. Denaturation is when the polypeptide chains unravel, losing their specific shape, therefore losing their function. When you heat an egg, for example, it denatures the ovalbumin, making them solid, white, and opaque. 
Changes in soil concentration and pH can also denature proteins. The specific shape that determines a protein's function has four successive levels of structure. Each level determines the next one. A protein is one or more polypeptides twisted, folded, and coiled into a specific shape. The amino acid sequence in the polypeptide determines the 3D shape of the protein. The primary structure is the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. All proteins must have the correct order of amino acids. Even a slight change in the primary structure can affect the overall shape and its ability to function. Secondary structure are the parts of the polypeptide fold or coil into local patterns. Alpha helixes are coils of polypeptide chains. Pleated sheets are folding of polypeptide chains. These two shapes are maintained by hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen and hydrogen groups and the um, carboxyl groups of the amino acids. Tertiary structure is the overall 3D shape of the polypeptide after it finishes bending and twisting in the secondary structure. Most of the tertiary stru structures are either globule or fibrous. The indentations and bulges give the polypeptide the specific shape appropriate to its function. Coordinary structure results from the bonding of two or more subunits. It may be the state, those subunits may be the same or they may be different ones. Nucleic acids are polymers that serve as the blueprints for proteins. It is the fourth and final group of macromolecules. There are two types, DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, which is ribonucleic acid. Within DNA, there are genes. These are specific stretches of the DNA molecule that program the amino acid sequence of proteins. DNA determines the structure and therefore the function of proteins, so DNA through the actions of proteins control the life of the cell and the organism. DNA, DNA transcribes or gives its information to RNA, which is translated into the primary structure of proteins. Both DNA and RNA are made of nucleotides. Those are the monomers that make up nucleic acids. There are three parts to the nucleotide, a five carbon sugar, a nitrogenous group, and a phosphate group. There are five different nitrogenous groups, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Those four are found in DNA. In RNA, uracil replaces thymine. Primidines are just a six-member carbon ring. Cytosine, thymine, and uracil are primidines. Purines are six-member ring fused to a five-member ring, and those include adenine and guanine. The phosphate group of one nucleotide bonds to the sugar of the next nucleotide by dehydration synthesis. RNA is a single strand, DNA is a double helix. Genes and their proteins document the hereditary background of an organism. The sequences of nucleotides in DNA are passed from parent to offspring. Siblings have more similarities in their DNA and proteins than unrelated people. Different species that appear to be closely related based on fossil evidence and anatomical evidence should also share a greater portion of their DNA and protein sequences. DNA and protein sequences have been used to determine heredity and evolution. It is one of the most exact and best tools we now have as evidence of evolution.